Having been arrested on the 27th of June, the defendant was charged with murder and rape on the 29th of June. On reception in prison, he indicated that he could not comprehend that he had done what he had done. He appeared for a preliminary hearing on the 1st of July 2022, and his PTPH was set for the 30th of September 2022. Prior to the listing, the solicitors acting for the defendant wrote to the court to inform them that they had not received an expert report commissioned from a psychiatrist because the defendant had not seen him. Furthermore, Owing to the industrial action being taken by the defence bar, his instructed advocate would not be present. Accordingly, I adjourned the hearing to the 19th of October, and an extension was given for service of the defence statement. The defendant failed, without a reasonable excuse, to attend two appointments with the psychologist on the 21st of September and the 3rd of October. His solicitors wrote to the court again to request a further adjournment. When the case came before the court for PTPH on the 19th of October, the defendant refused to attend, and it became apparent that he had not attended a conference that had been arranged with his solicitors. The defence were directed to secure the services of a psychologist who could provide a report as soon as possible, and the PTPH was adjourned to the 24th of October. On that date, the solicitor still did not have a report and the PTPH was adjourned once again to the 11th of November. In the report of Dr Black, which is dated the 26th of October, and which was, I'm sure, in the hands of the defence soon after that date, the defendant suggests that he did not remember what had happened and he could not believe what he was seeing when shown the CCTV in interview. In fact, at the police interviews after arrest, the defendant affected a bored and disinterested facade. The defendant was not produced at the next hearing because he tested positive for COVID. The PTPH was put back to the 16th of November. Despite a direction that he attend in person, the defendant refused to come to court on the 16th of November and a video link had to be arranged. The defence took instructions from the defendant and approached the prosecution about potential pleas and this was indicated to the court. The PTPH was adjourned to the 19th of November and on that occasion, the defendant pleaded guilty to the preferred two-count <coughs> indictment, murder and sexual assault. I accept that the, that the defence solicitors commissioned expert reports to ensure there was no psychiatric defence to the charge of murder and to ensure fitness to plead and to be tried. These were responsible steps in a case of such gravity. I also accept that because of the action taken by criminal barristers, the defendant was not able to receive advice from junior barristers or the King's Council until October this year. I reject the suggestion from the defence that because he was heard on a prison phone telling his mother that he was banged to rights, he should be taken to have indicated at a very, very early stage that he would accept responsibility for the killing. He never indicated this to the court until the 16th of November, and at stages, his non-engagement frustrated the work being done on his behalf. In addition, as Mr Carter Stevenson accepted in his written submission on sentence, he caused some additional delay through taking a belligerent attitude when required to come to court, including telling the jailers on one occasion that there was no point in attending a hearing at which he was required. Overall, my conclusion is that the defendant is entitled to less than the maximum discount on the murder count, and I would allow one-eighth. Although given the length of the term I will impose, the maximum discount allowed can be five years. Considering all these features, after a trial, the minimum term would have been 43 years. I allow five years, as I have said, for the plea of guilty indicated by counsel on the 16th of November, a few weeks before trial. A sentence of four years concurrent is imposed for sexual assault. The sentence for the brutal, sexually motivated murder of Zara Alina is imprisonment for life. The defendant will serve 38 years as the minimum term. The court would like to thank counsel and also to commend Mr. and Mrs. Condor, Georgina Woolard, 
and Maria Bergen. So there we have the sentencing at the uh, Old Bailey by uh, Mrs Justice Chima Grubb uh, following the, uh, sent the sentencing of, the, of uh, Jordan McSweeney. You see him there on your screen, the man who killed 35-year-old law graduate Zara Alina in East London last June. McSweeney admitted murdering and sexually assaulting Zara on her way home from a night out. Uh, Miss uh, Alina's uh, family could be here sobbing during that uh, sentencing and uh, the judge had uh, said that McSweeney will receive no mitigation beyond his guilty plea as he expressed no remorse. He made no expression of sorrow for the impact on anyone else of his killing. She said that she didn't believe that the mental health issues that McSweeney undoubtedly has reduced his culpability over the attack. She had contrasted the characters of McSweeney with Zara Alina and said they couldn't have been more different. And she outlined in extraordinarily chilling fashion the circumstances of Zara Alina's death at the hands of Jordan McSweeney. He has no spine whatsoever, the judge said, because he refused to appear in court to hear the sentence. The minimum term was 30 years, but she eventually, after all her considerations, sentenced him to 38 years in prison. Of course, because it was murder, it carries a life sentence, and 38 years was the number that she arrived at after all of her due considerations. Well, our correspondent Helena Wilkinson has the background to this case. This is Jordan McSweeney in the hours before he murdered Zara Alina. He staggers across a busy road after being thrown out of a bar in East London. What follows is disturbing behaviour. This CCTV footage captures him following the first of multiple women that night. He followed her for 20 minutes. Look at how close he gets to her. He follows her into a shop, then loiters outside, waiting for her to emerge. The woman then makes a run for it down this side street. McSweeney isn't far behind. Soon after, he follows another woman who had a lucky escape. In the end, it was Zara Alina who he became fixated on, a law graduate who had dreams of becoming a solicitor. Zara Alina had been with friends here in Ilford in East London. McSweeney spotted her as she walked home alone in the early hours. When Zara Alina reached this road, she was being followed by McSweeney. He dragged her onto a driveway, forced her to the ground and sexually assaulted her. He kicked her and stamped on her repeatedly, leaving her struggling to breathe. After he murdered the 35-year-old, McSweeney returned to this nearby fairground where he'd been working. Jordan McSweeney, you're under arrest for rape and murder of a female at Cranbrook Road. Police right. found him asleep in a caravan at the fairground. Well, it's search now, right? yeah. Officers recovered the bag you can see McSweeney carrying here. It contained blood-stained clothing and shoes, which he'd worn the night of the attack. He can only be described as a danger to women. He is somebody that we really can't allow out on the streets. That said... His level of previous offending didn't lead to us thinking that he was capable of this extreme violence. Last month at the Old Bailey, McSweeney pleaded guilty to Zara Alina's murder and guilty to sexually assaulting her. McSweeney has 28 previous convictions. When he murdered Zara Alina, he was out on licence, having been released from prison nine days earlier. He was going to be recalled. Police had gone to an address to arrest him the day before the attack for breaching his licence conditions, but he wasn't there. The Ministry of Justice said a review is now underway. Today, Zara's family and friends will perhaps find some closure that the man who took her from them will be off the streets for a very long time. Helena Wilkinson, BBC News, at the Old Bailey.